What's up, mathematicians? This is Mr. Bergman here, coming to you with section 1.6, special functions, piecewise functions, to be specific. Um, so what is a piecewise function? A piecewise function is defined uh, kind of like this. It's got pieces. And uh, this everything in this red uh, highlight thing is a one piece. And there are three pieces in the example piece. The top piece, the middle piece, the bottom piece. And so there's two different parts of each piece. There's the rule over here, and then there's the interval over here. So the rule is how you calculate, given any particular x value, um, how you calculate the y value. Very much like you've always graphed, you know, you always, uh, most functions have just one rule, and you take the x value and put it into the y value, and that's the, you use the rule to calculate the y value. But here, over here, uh, you have the interval, and tells you depending on which x value you choose. You, it'll tell you which rule to, to use. So, for example, if x is equal, in this case, if x is equal to negative 5, um, if your x value that you're choosing, the equation table graph is negative 5, then use the top rule. If x is equal to 0, then use the middle rule. And if x is equal to positive 5, use the bottom rule. So, here we go. Let's see what this looks like exactly. It's, it's a little tricky, so we're going to go kind of slow. Here, uh, this is exactly the same as in the example. We've got three pieces to this. And really what we're trying to do is you're just basically going to graph y equals 3. Like this 3 right here corresponds to the idea of the line of y equals 3. The rule says 3, and that means that doesn't matter. Um, there's no like calculations to do. You don't have to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. The output's just always going to be 3. That's what the rule says. And the same thing down here. The output's always going to be negative 3. And when is that? When you're going to use this rule? It's, you're going to use this rule particularly if x is less than or equal to negative three. You're going to use this rule here, um, negative two x minus three, only when x is in between. Um, if negative three is less than x, and which is less than or equal to positive three. And you'll use this rule or down here if x is greater than three. Um, it's kind of tricky. Let me show you what it looks like here. Uh, but one more thing that I do, but uh, I do want to explain before I show you the graph is this: um, because this is a less than or equal to sign, then you're going to use a solid dot, and because this is a, a greater than sign, you're going to use an open dot, just to signify this little line right here. This little line of mine is going to make this a solid dot. And because there's no little line right here, it's going to make this an open dot, indicating that we don't, we're don't we not really using the value of negative 3 here. It's just the, the boundary marker. So uh, very much like if you were graphing them on a single number line, it's straight across. OK, so um, graphing line y equals 3 is not too bad. It's just a horizontal line at positive y equals positive 3 except uh, the interval says you're only going to use the part that is less than or equal to negative 3. So you can see we're going to need a solid dot. Uh, another um, really handy rule to think about is that um, every one of these numbers corresponds to a dot on the graph. So this negative 3 and this negative 3 and this 3 and this 3 is all going to correspond to dots on the graph. Sometimes open, sometimes close. So this, we're going to have a closed filled in dot right here boom you can see it goes from it's at negative 3 at uh, uh, x equals negative 3 y equals positive 3 and then it's including all the x values that are less than negative 3 down here uh, you we're going to need a table to graph this y equals negative 2x minus 3 and you notice I didn't go to 0 1 2 from this table I actually chose these numbers, negative 3 and positive 3, and then a number in between as well. So negative 3 and positive 3 are the x values that I'm choosing. And then negative 3 is going to correspond to an open dot because of this symbol right here. And positive 3 is going to be correspond to a closed dot because of this symbol right here. You notice this is the one that has the solid line underneath. Oops. And, so, um, and so you can see here it's going to be a closed dot. Where is this open dot going to be? Well, it's going to be at negative 3, comma 3. 
as you can see, actually you can't see it. It's underneath this solid dot. And this, where's this closed dot going to be? It's going to be a three comma negative nine down here. And then you can connect the dots. Notice that this zero comma negative three is going to be right here. So it connects all the dots. Boom. Uh, how do you do the? How do you graph the green piece? Well, you it. This negative 3 corresponds to the same idea as y, just y equals negative 3, except you're only taking values that are greater than 3. So I'll, I'll put an open dot right here at, th um, n at 3 comma negative 3, and then it's going to go I'll only, it's, it's, it's basically a horizontal line. You can graph the, the entire horizontal line of negative 3, except you cut it off right here and you only keep this, erasing the left of it right here, the left part. Some ideas uh, to look at here is, first of all, this is not continuous. Uh, you can see you can't just draw this with one swoop of a pencil on the graph if you had it on pencil and paper. You'd have to, like, you could start here, go draw this all down, and then you'd have to pick up the pencil at this break and put it back down here and keep on going. And so for that reason, it's not continuous. You could say that it's continuous just from this small little part right here, or this small part right here. But overall, on all real numbers, it's not continuous. It's also not one to one. It fails the horizontal line test. So you can see, you can draw a horizontal line here at this height or at this height, and it, and it intersects more than one point. Although it is, uh, it does pass the vertical line test. You draw vertical lines, and there's only one point at each place, even right here. Even if you draw a vertical line, and this open dot doesn't really count for the vertical line test, but the closed dot does. So there's only one point on the function where the vertical line passes through. Uh, next. So again, three pieces. You've got a top piece, a middle piece, and a bottom piece. And this um, this top piece right here, we're going to graph using a table, and I'm going to choose only x values that are less than or equal to zero, uh, as you can see right here. I'm going to choose multiples of three just because of the fraction. It'll make graphing a lot easier. And I'm going to go uh, zero times negative uh, two-thirds is zero. Negative three times two-thirds is negative two, and negative six times two-thirds is negative four. This zero right here corresponds to this dot, and so I'm going to, and I know it's a closed dot because of the or, or equal to part of this symbol. And so you can see in blue, I've got, I'm plotting these points, and at 0, 0, there's going to be a solid dot right here. Boom. Solid dot, and then going this direction, you've got the other points. Um, next, the middle piece. This this three, it's kind of hard to think about as three as a function, but it corresponds to the line y equals three. The the rule is doesn't matter what the input is, the output's going to be three. So that's like y equals three. The line graphically, the, the line is y equals three. It's right here. You can imagine a really ho long horizontal line y equals three, just like you've seen before, but. Um, we're only going to consider the x values between 1 and 3. And you can see there's an or equal to symbol on both of these. So we've got the solid dots here. A solid dot at 1, 3, and a solid dot at 3, 3. As you can see right here. And connecting everything in between. Next, for the bottom piece, we're going to need a table. So we've got negative 2x plus 5. And... Let's see, for what x values? I'm going to choose on my table. I'm not just going to go 0, 1, 2 on my table for the x values. I'm going to go, I'm going to start at 4. I'm going to choose all values that are greater than or equal to 4. So 4, 5, and 6. Uh, plug them in, and uh, I calculate these y values. And so then, you and because of the or equal to portion of this symbol, I know it's going to be a solid dot. Where is the solid dot going to go? It's going to go at 4, comma, negative 3. 4 comma negative 3 right there. And then you can see it keeps on going 5 comma negative 5, 5 comma negative 5, 6 comma negative 7, and it just keeps on going. Some features, some uh, thoughts about this graph, like the previous one, it's not continuous. You can't draw it with one swoop of your pencil. It goes here, and then you have to lift up your pencil and go here, 
and then continue and lift up your pencil again. So overall, it's not continuous overall real numbers. It's not one to one. It fails the horizontal line test. Uh, this black portion right here, uh, because it's a horizontal line, you draw a horizontal line at a height of three, and then all of a sudden you've got multiple points. So that's what fails. The domain is not all real numbers. There are some x values which will which do not produce a y value. So you can see here, uh, because of these rules, um, you know what to do for most x values. But what about like 0 0.5, the number right in between 0 and 1? There's, there's no rule that governs how to calculate the output. There is no outputs. And the same thing for a value of 3.5. Um, what do you do if x, if you're trying to calculate f of x, f of uh, 3.5? The input of 3.5, the x value of 3.5 has no output. So therefore, um, 3.5 should not be in the domain. And you can see that right here, you've got negative, uh, there's three parts to this domain that we're looking at. Negative infinity to zero, these are all these x values. And then also one to three, including one and including three. And uh, but but 0 0.5, as I said, has no y value, so it's not in the domain. And then 3.5 is also not in the domain. So um, we go from 4 to infinity, including 4. Right here, you can notice the brackets. Let's take one more example. Okay, here we've got three pieces, a top piece, middle piece, bottom piece, blue, black, green. And I want to graph this top piece with a table because it has a, um, an algebraic rule here that I have to calculate. So, and, uh, and I'm going to say, I'm going to only choose x values that are less than negative 1. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So, uh, plugging these in, I get 1, 2, and I'll let you figure out what that is. And then, on top of it, here, because it's just x is less than negative 1, it's going to be an open dot right here. x is less than negative 1. You can see the graph of plotting all these points at, at, at negative 1, comma 1. We have this open dot, and then all the other points, negative 2, comma 2, negative 3, comma, I don't know, uh, get graphed right here, and you connect the dots, and that's, that's how you get the piece. Um, the black middle piece right here is, it's kind of difficult, as always, I've, I keep on saying it, like the zero is kind of difficult to imagine producing an entire graph, but what if you think about the line y equals zero, it's a horizontal line right here along the x-axis. And you could graph the whole thing, and then perhaps erase the parts you don't need. You don't need anything that's on this side of negative one or higher than positive one. It's just going to be from negative one to one with closed dots because of the symbols negative 1 to 1. You're erasing the rest, you just keep this part right here. You just, and then we decide to make them closed dots. What about x, um, if x is greater than 1? So making a table, choosing only values. OK, so I, I know that 1 is not greater than 1, but I'm still going to put it on my table because I want to know where this open dot goes. The open dot, uh, same thing here. Negative 1 is technically not less than negative 1, but I want to know where the open dot goes, so I'm going to put on a table anyway. So if I put in 1, I get an output of 1. If I put in 2, output of 2. Put in 3, out. the rule is take the input and make it the output also. f of x is equal to x. So, um, so I'm going to use that information to graph this point, this line right here. They all get plotted. 1, 1, 1, 1 2, 2, 3, 3, connect the dots. It goes on forever in this direction. But I'm going to make sure this 1, 1 is actually the, uh, the location of an open dot because of this symbol right here. It's just greater than. It's not greater than or equal to. All right, y'all. I just want to uh, shout out to um, my hometown, uh, Philadelphia. It's where I currently live, and it's also where I was born. So uh, when you get to that audio check, you can just say that Mr. Bergman was born in Philadelphia. Hey, y'all, grab that calculator. Pause the video. I got to grab mine. And I'm back. You've unpaused the video. You've got your calculator. It's on. And you are going to press B for graph. Let's actually do it. There it is. B, graph. And then a tab to get to the first function. We're going to use the button to the right of the 9. It is there. 
it's the library. It has a lot of different symbols. Some of them you'll recognize, some of them we'll learn later. But that's the button for create a piecewise function. How many pieces? Three. You can type in the rule first. The rule for this. Um, again, the button to the right of the nine brings you up that library. And we've got absolute value of x and negative three. Now we have to type in the interval. The interval here will be all the x is control equals to get that menu less than or equal to three, negative three. Make sure you press the negative button that's below the, ne the three. Uh, negative three control equals to get to the menu is less than x. And then control equals brings up the menu is less than less than or equal to positive three. Let's get the third interval for the third piece. X is greater than to get the greater than symbol we need the control equals menu and that'll bring up less than three. Enter and there it is. Uh, we've got the full interval right there. Yeah. Come here, come here, Cora. You can press Control T, and that's what you get. Yeah. The table actually shows the actual values that we have right there. Cora, yeah. say bye. Bye. Bye.